Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have got a decor, decor of some fancy decor, tutorial for you today. We are gonna make a couple fun collages that we are gonna use like an old calendar. Um, a lot of fun here and it doesn't really take a lot of um, artistic experience to do, which I love. It's quick, it's easy, and it looks fantastic. So I really wanted to shoot this video upstairs on my fireplace mantle, but it's been so dark and overcast in Maine for the past six months that I'm not gonna get a sunny filming day up there anytime soon. So um, I thought I'd just bring them down here where I have pretty good lights. And this is one, it's done on a 16 by 20 canvas, uh, just one of those inexpensive economy canvases, which is great if you have those hanging around, they don't like to paint on, they work great for this. And uh, what we're gonna use is um, some supplies you may have. I saved an old calendar from, um, uh, it was from the Dollar Tree actually, and it was from a couple of years ago, but I love the pictures in it so much that I decided that it would make wonderful collage elements. I also have some vellum and some mulberry paper, some acrylic paint. We're gonna get messy, so of course I have my secret weapon, lava soap. The great thing about this is sometimes when you're decoupaging, you get glue on your hands and you go to wash your hands and it seems like your hands are clean, but then like, an hour later you see these little bits it looks like you have gross peeling skin it's actually just glue that you didn't see because it's kind of clear when it dries this will take it off in one go and leave your hand just silky soft so I can't recommend this enough they're a wonderful sponsor I thank them for their support and there's a link in the video description so you can go check this out for yourself so without further ado let's go to the table and I'm going to show you how I made these two collages. By the way, I'm decorating my mantle. If you have any ideas of what would go really good with these collages, um, like on my mantelpiece, please let me know in the comments below because I'm kind of stumped for ideas. I've kind of like embraced this new minimalist uh, craze, so I don't want a ton of stuff, but I like to look up a ton of stuff, so uh, <laughs> who knows what I'm going to end up doing, but if you have some great ideas, leave them in the comments below because I'd love to hear what you think. And also thumbs up for springtime home decor ideas. Thumbs up for spring. I'd really love some spring now. Winter has been too long. <laughs> Without further ado, let's go to the table and I'll show you how it's done. For my project, I'm using two 16 inch by 20 inch economy canvases. They're very inexpensive and they're more than up to the job here. I had some large mulberry paper sheets that I wanted to use up, so I thought that one would be perfect because I can cover both panels. I also went through my stash and found some pattern vellum. Now pattern vellum is fun because you can see through it to the um, colors or papers you have underneath, but it's still sheer and just, it gives you kind of a um, vintage whimsical touch. I also have a bunch of uh, calendar pieces that I've cut out from a, a calendar that I saved a couple years ago and it came from the Dollar Tree which I love because it was only a buck and I got to enjoy it all year while I had it hanging and then I get to enjoy it again. They do release those calendars every year so um, just keep your eyes open for pretty calendars or you know save one that you have in your home. So I'm going to cut this paper right in half so I can attach uh, half of each sheet to the canvas. You can use any white glue or decoupage medium for this purpose. I happen to prefer matte finish Mod Podge for mine, but you know, use whatever you have on hand. You can see that I've already done one canvas already with this kind of cream colored paper, and I'm about to start the second one. Remember after you pour from like a big jug, like I buy my Mod Podge by the gallon, make sure you wipe the threads of that uh, with a baby wipe so it takes off any um, loose glue so or wet glue so you don't end up sealing your cap on. That's tragic when that happens, especially if it's a full jug of glue or Mod Podge. I'm using a brush just to spread the glue all over the canvas, and then I'm gonna press the paper in place. Now, mulberry paper, sometimes it has a sharp side and a smooth side just depending on what side was up I think in the uh, mold when it was made um, so you might want to just kind of run your hands over and feel which side is smoother and have that side up because it's gonna look about the same either way but that'll just save your fingers as you're um, spreading and smoothing it out on your canvas Make sure when you're covering your canvas, you allow a couple inches of extra paper or basically like maybe just a little over an inch on every side. That way you can wrap that excess paper over and give yourself a really smooth, nice, neat and finished look on the edges of your canvas. Then when you're done, you can flip the entire thing over and start working on the front. Don't worry, the glue's not gonna dry so fast that it's gonna stick to your table, but if you are worried, you could always put a little wax paper underneath to protect it or work on a non-stick mat. I didn't have any problem, just like, I picked it up and moved it after I was done collaging my elements down and it was fine. So now I'm just gonna put a layer of Mod Podge on my canvas, and remember this is the matte finish, so I'm not gonna have any shiny spots. Um, if you do get shiny spots, when you're all done everything, just give it a varnish of your choice and that will even everything out. 
I'm working on both canvases at the same time because they're going to be hung together on my living room wall. They're actually going to be on either side of a large mirror I have over my fireplace. So by working at them both at the same time, I'm going to keep the designs not symmetrical, but balanced between both canvases. So the first thing I'm going to put down for my first layers are vellum. Now I'm going to warn you here because I almost regret doing this because vellum is like a, it's almost like a paper or plastic impregnated paper that really does not do well once you get it wet. It, it kind of cockles really badly. It just kind of really fights the moisture. So I'm going to have to, to kind of fight with some wrinkling um, on top of this vellum. You'll probably notice it a little bit, especially as I start to add the, um, the glue on top of it. You can see it just wants to curl right up, spring right up like that. Um, I really love the patterns and prints on these. Plus it, they were already there in my stash. So I use them. If you're buying new supplies for this project, I would recommend getting a printed tissue paper or maybe just getting some, uh, some tissue paper from a party store and stamping your backgrounds on it because I think you'd have a much easier time working with that versus the vellum. But I had the vellum so I am going to truck right ahead. There you can see that one just kind of curl it up over there. It just wants to fight me the entire way. I do love the way it looks when it's done but yeah it did give me a little bit of issues while I was creating it. The best tip I have for creating a collage is to prepare before you sit down to glue. Um, if you start off by trimming out all of your images that you want to use before you start to uh, get down there with the paper and the glue, you're going to have so much more fun doing this and it's going to be a very quick, seamless process. The whole collaging uh, portion of both of these canvases only took an hour and that's with adding the paper. That's from, from when I started the tape, rolling the tape basically. It only took me 45 minutes or so. So it's a very quick project as long as you have everything Thing cut ahead of time. And I just want to make a quick note about the robe I have on. It's still very chilly in my studio. So I have an old uh, house coat that I throw on before I go downstairs. So I uh, didn't realize that was so in the shot, but don't I look fancy in my cheetah print robe. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go through and just start gluing stuff down, overlapping, working on both canvases at the same time, because that's how you are going to get um, a really balanced look. Now it's important to um, have either your Mod Podge, Decoupage Medium, white glue, whatever you're using, have it on your surface of your canvas, then paint it on the back of the image you're trying to collage, and then put another coat on top of that. That keeps it from uh, wrinkling too badly because you have an even surface tension. You, It's wet on the back, it's wet on the front. Um, it bonds really well and it's less likely to pucker later on. I mean, with the exception of the vellum, which is just kind of a troublesome <laughs> collage element, all the other elements are going to remain nice and flat and easy to work with. After the canvases are completely dry, we're going to antique them. And to antique them, all I'm doing is taking a round stiff bristle brush. This is actually a chalk paint brush uh, or a chalk wax brush. And I'm using a combination of Mod Podge and a pinky rose kind of colored paint. And I have those mixed together. If you have glazing medium, you could use that, but Mod Podge works really good for this or your white glue will work fine. So you can see I'm mixing it. So I have a really pale um, consistency. And then I am just using circular strokes and kind of just antiquing the edge edge of my canvas. So for the pink, I want to go in about two or three inches and I just kind of want to blend it off to nothing. So I'm just kind of staining the edges of the canvas and I want to do that all the way around on this canvas. And you want to do both canvases while you're at it. I'm just going to show you the process on one. Now I've added some brown paint to my uh, palette and mixed that with some Mod Podge and I'm doing the edges. So I find that if I start doing the edges of the canvas here and then just kind of pounce it in towards the center, I'm just going to get a more subtle rouging. I don't want that brown to take over and I want to make sure the pink still shows. So um, start with your edges first and then bounce it in. Also, by having that darker color on the edge, you're going to be building a frame. So it's going to look really natural hanging up on your wall without a frame. So it's saves money and it looks uh, kind of, it's vintage modern because it doesn't have a clunky frame. So you can see just by pouncing on the edges, you just get that subtle smoky um, rouging in, but you can still see plenty of that pink. Now, if you felt like that brown is a little too harsh, you can take a little yellow ochre, which is kind of like a soft brownish yellow, and you can add some of that into. That also gives it a little bit more of a vintage vibe. So it's completely up to you and your personal taste what you want to do here, but these are some pretty safe colors to pick. The last step is antiquing with the black and just like we did with the brown, we want to do less than the previous color. So we're just getting the edges and just kind of tip tapping it right on the uh, the corner where the uh, canvas kind of bends over the stretcher frame. It's just a very subtle 
frame, if you will. So you just want to tap that all the way around and make sure you do it to both canvases. And then you're going to have a beautiful pair of vintage collage canvases to hang up. It's quick, easy, fun, and I think it looks fantastic. And it's a great way to use up maybe some old scrapbook paper or calendars that you have kicking around. I want to thank you so much for watching today. And I want to thank Lava Soap for sponsoring this video. You can find their website in the video description or visit lavasoap.com slash shop to find some goodies. I love it because it keeps my hands soft and smooth while I craft and I think you'd enjoy it too. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.